So Darcy Coates is one of my favorite authors. She puts out a book, I'm gonna read it. And so this one is one of her newest ones, Dead of Winter. It hits the ground running. You come in and you're in a blizzard trying to survive. <laughs> it's immediate. So immediately I have anxiety. Also, don't read the synopsis if you don't want any spoilers because I read the synopsis and you may have watched one of my other videos and already know what the synopsis is, but I had such anxiety waiting for the thing to happen that was in the synopsis that I was like, ah, I know it's going to happen any minute and I, I didn't like that. I didn't like knowing it ahead of time. I almost wish that wasn't in the synopsis. If you've read the synopsis, you know. Not gonna say what it is, but it gave me extreme anxiety. I had a lot of fun with this book. It follows the main character, Krista. Her and her boyfriend, Kiernan, are going on this trip to Colorado out in the mountains where it's real secluded. They're gonna stay at this cool, rustic lodge. It has all the modern amenities and all that stuff. He grew up in this area and she kind of thinks maybe he might propose to her. So it seems like a big deal in the relationship kind of trip. And there's, I think there's like nine or 10 other people. And you have the group leader, Brian, and then there's all these different people. There's some couples, some older people, some younger people, a guy and his son. And it's a very motley crew of people. And so they're on this way to this fabulous winter destination. Myself, I am not a big winter vacation person. Like, keep me indoors. I don't want to go anywhere. I've never been a skier. I never snowboarded. I did like to go sledding when I was a kid, and I would totally still go sledding this day and age. I would tube down a freaking hill of snow, whatever, but I'm not about skiing or snowboarding. It's funny because almost all my friends growing up were all snowboarders, and I just never went. I was like, mm, like breaking an arm or leg just didn't sound, I guess, that inviting to me, and I just don't like the cold that much. I've always been a, like, take me to the beach. I want to go to the beach. Sit in the sand, go swimming, not think about what is out there in the ocean that can eat me. <laughs> they keep reading all these horror books about these destinations that make me not want to go swimming. But anyways, I'm getting off track here. So winter, wonderland, beautiful vacation. Everybody's on the bus. They're on the way to this vacation. As they're getting close to their destination, there's a tree down across the road. So they have to stop, but the guy who's planning the trip is prepared. He's got a chainsaw and gas. They can chop up the tree, get it out of the way, and then be on their way. And so while they're stopped, he's like, if you guys want to, you know, walk around a little bit and get some air, that's cool. And so Kiernan and Krista, well, Kiernan wants to like take her somewhere to get like a nice view. So he's like, yeah, follow me, let's go off. And so they go off and it starts snowing and a really bad storm starts coming in. And Kiernan's like, oh, we're almost there, we're almost there. And then they end up getting lost in this blizzard. And I don't know how long they end up being gone. Kiernan and Krista get separated. Krista ends up stumbling back, trying to find her way to the bus. Doesn't find the bus, but ends up finding this cabin and sees a light and stumbles onto this weird little cabin that everyone found and Kiernan is still missing at this point in time. So they all get into this cabin and, you know, they figure the next day they'll get out and they'll be able to make their way up to the next area to get to the lodge. And then this is where things go wrong. Unbeknownst to the people in the cabin, one of their own goes missing. Something dreadful happens. And then they start to be picked off one by one. And it seems like maybe they're not going to be able to leave this cabin because certain things and the road is full of snow and they can't get the bus out anyway and the keys are missing and stuff just kind of spirals from there. Everyone kind of suspects everyone at some point in time so they do things in groups. As their numbers dwindle and the possibility of rescue gets like slimmer and slimmer it is just a really messed up story. So when I was reading this book, I take notes. I take notes on the characters and whatever and all that. At page 81, I even wrote the page number. I was like, it's this person. It's this person doing it. Da 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 da. And I was right. Honestly, if you've read any of these kind of books, it was really easy to tell who the killer was going to be. Like, I knew immediately. But that didn't ruin it for me because the characters didn't know. And it was still fun watching them, like, be all suspicious of this person and this person. 
Darcy Coates does, like, she tries to throw you off of thinking who the killer possibly is. I honestly didn't think it worked so well, but I still thought this was a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed this book, even though I knew who it was. Or maybe I've just gotten into her style of writing and was able to recognize it. I don't know. If you like thrillers that are fast paced, if you want anxiety going in immediately, like what's happening, where, <laughs> help, then Dead of Winter by Darcy Coates might be for you. It's fun, frosty, and freaky. So if you are a fan of Darcy Coates, the next video coming up will be about another Darcy Coates book. So stick around, check it out. And if you had fun hanging out today, hit that subscribe button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.